Welcome back to YouTubers as we draw closer to 9, 16, 12, whatever the hell that is. We're going to be reviewing Smackdown for you guys today with me, Mr. Parker, and this guy sitting next to me. You, you, you guys know who he is. He's Tommy Nair NJ. What's up? Subscribe above, like this video, comment any thoughts you have on this Smackdown uh, show down in the comment section below. And you better contact us in the link in the box below. Yes, and uh, I'll be interested to see your Twitter and Facebook over the next couple of days. I do have a hunch that 9, 16, 12 might just be you. It's coming quite quickly, and some people have been commenting and even subscribing to the secret channel where these videos are popping up. Oh yes, indeed, and I there is a we'll provide you a link to the the latest uh, the latest promo vignette in the description box below, so you can go check that video out on on the channel um, on this mysterious channel I know nothing about. So, do you know anything about this channel? Or all I'll say is that people, when the day comes, be prepared. <laughs> be prepared, I guess. Uh, so yeah, we get onto this SmackDown, the uh, the Go Home Show. For Night of Champions, and as you can tell, is the going show because Terminator NJ's here. So um, I will say this first: um, it's good to see that Jerry Lawler has gotten much better since this incident on Raw. I think you could also echo those feelings, even though you have no heart. I'll just move on from that, I guess. Um, so we open up the show this week with David Otunga, Alberto Del Rio, and Ricardo Rodriguez moaning about Sheamus. We get footage of Christian getting into Sheamus via the broking. Then we get. Christian on the satellite feed basically saying the bro, the bro kick made him lose a year of his career. But despite that, he does still respect him and he thinks the bro kick should be banned. Do you feel, uh, especially as you're a real tough guy, that the bro kick would damage you, Terminator NJ? First, let me say there was worthless people in the ring to begin with this promo. So this boring opening promo really didn't go anywhere for me. But the bro kick... <laughs> it is yet a feather towards your face, I guess. Seriously. Yes, we then get Daniel Bryan coming out. Just, you know, what are your opinions on the on the anger management of Daniel Bryan, Terminator NJ? Just, I'd just be interested to know. It's a stupid storyline for a little kid who thinks he's got anger problems and it's not growing anywhere any worse. A bit like his beard, really. It's growing everywhere, isn't it? Um, basically, he comes out saying that the bro kick made him into a goat face, and then we get the announcement later of Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan. Then out comes Sheamus, and to be honest with you, by that point, I had really lost interest in this opening segment, which was very boring and very drawn out. Would you not agree? They just made it go on and on and on, and everyone there, even Daniel Bryan, didn't help it. Sheamus, who's meant to be the top guy, smack didn't help it. It was just an awful opening promo. And especially with a guy like you, who really has no patience, as we've seen in many videos. Not a very good opening segment for you, I guess. I guess that is a no. We then get Sin Cara versus Miz. Um, remember when Sin Cara used to get legit reactions before he got that massive injury and uh, was out for so long. Remember when he used to get legit reactions from the SmackDown crowd and they didn't have to pump in crowd noise every time he came out? No. Oh, you, oh, you probably weren't around then. Um, Sin Cara getting reaction. Huh, why would you react to a little guy like that? He botches. He can't wrestle very well. And he's a guy that WWE wants to become higher than where he is. The next Rey Mysterio. Don't make me laugh, WWE. Okay, they still have the blue lighting. Um, do you think we should give you some lighting, maybe? I think if, if the producers would pay for it, we probably would. I just need the light on. Oh, that, that's, that's fair enough. I don't know why they still have the blue lighting, especially when you've got him in the ring with, um, essentially, the Intercontinental Championship. Long story short, Sin Cara defeats The Miz. They botched the La Mystica once again. Um, so we then get this backstage segment where we where we basically get a four-way match announced for the IC title, the Miz versus Rey Mysterio versus Sin Cara versus my boy Cody Rhodes. So we got a match announced for the pay-per-view on the, the two days before. They couldn't announce this any sooner. Or? Week after week after week, we've seen different wrestlers going against the other opponents in this match. We knew what was coming eventually. Mm -hmm. And now we get this match for United Champions. We're not going to get a new champion, I don't think, because none of these are worthy of that belt. You know what you need? You need a stress ball. You, you seem a bit tense. You really need to, you really need to uh, unstress yourself. Hey, wait a minute. Why is wh why is my why is my stress ball smaller than your stress ball? That's ridiculous. What what about these uh, this Kane and Daniel Bryan stress ball segment uh, with uh, Doctor Shelby and Double Entendres Galore talking about balls and uh, who's got the bigger balls? It's kind of like real life, isn't it? Two grown men talking about how big or small their balls are. What a creep. 
That guy really freaks me out. He thinks he's someone to sort out someone's anger management. Well, come to me, and I'll show you what anger's all about. Yeah, and trust me, I know that up front, guys. I'll just say that. But that, that, that then leads us a very entertaining segment, in my opinion. It then leads us into the Kane versus Kofi Kingston singles match. So it's back to normal booking with the tag teams. You know, you had this nice, entertaining segment with Kane and Daniel Bryan before, and, and then it's kind of back to business as normal. Kane wins with the choke slam in two minutes. Like, I guess you could, I guess a Kane should be beating a Kobe Kingston in two minutes, but not really making me look forward to the pay-per-view match too much, even though I feel that the match itself does make a lot of sense. Well done, Kane, for getting the win here. But the thing is, it did not stop with the awesome win that Kane got. That creep came out, and Kane ended up hugging Kobe Kingston. What the hell are you doing, Kane? I guess you're, you're a fan of Kane. I guess you see a bit of yourself in Kane, do you? I guess Kane may see himself in you, I guess. Kane is beneath me, but this thing just really let me down. Yes, yeah, so like Terminator Ranger said, out comes Dr. Shelby. Kane hugs Kofi Kingston in a heartfelt moment that, uh, that yeah, we'll just move on from that one. Um, Randy Orton's pre-match promo. Does he does he say to you, Terminator Ranger, that he is a face? Or does he give you more of the impression that he is a heel? Judging by his pre-match promo that he gave today in the Tonight Show. He screams out a heel because this pacing isn't really working for him, but he hypes up that special date that is coming up really close, people. So not Orton. Forget about his dumb promo. Be prepared, mortals. For, uh, <laughs> what, for this? Is this it? Is this what you're talking about? Oh, God. Um, I, I, I must admit, I, I don't look forward to that day. I don't know what's going to happen. No one knows what's going to happen. Apart from, I believe, one person who's sitting next to me. But we will move on. The Randy Orton versus, uh, versus Tensai went about seven minutes. It was a pretty decent match for what it was. Orton looked strong going into Night of Champions. The post-match segment, though, where you could barely hear Vicky because they were pump pumping in so much freaking canned heat. And then you have, pretty much have Randy Orton calling Dolph Ziggler's behind attack, which... How, how, it's almost like Orton was almost Orton was saying, "Now nah, you ain't getting me from behind. I'm gonna call out. I'm gonna call your back. That your back attack, even though I can't even see it. It's kind of stupid, really." And uh. for a guy that screwed up his career by smoke for the second time, I expect a third. Why the WD book him so strong over a, an opponent that should quite easily go on and kick his ass at the pay per view? You could say so. Um, we had a Cesaro promo. Um, Antonio Cesaro got some. Roll more time because that is how he is scripted to talk. Um, he didn't even get an entrance though. It's kind of disappointing. You've got your US champion, and he didn't even get an entrance. He's he's outraged that there is a battle royal to determine who is the number one contender. We now have this series of events where Tyson Kidd comes out, Cesaro throws him out the ring, and then you have Brodus Clay coming out, and he proceeds to squash the US champion. And we kind of get the tease that. Probably going to be Brodus Clay versus uh, Cesaro at the pay per view with the Battle Royal. I'd be in at the in the pre show, I guess. I don't know how they're going to do this, but when I look at this, I just think none of these are really worth that US Championship. So this promo really bored me and led nowhere once again. Um, Wade Barrett then appeared on the stage, um, saying that next week someone will get a sample of the Barrett Barrage. Um, the Barrett Barrage Terminator NJ, something that is rather insignificant to you? Do you feel that was made to be important by the WWE, by your standards? They're trying to make Barrett something that he's not. He's no fight, he's no top guy, he's actually worthless. And all like I've said before, if Barrett wants to prove that he's the best, come up against me. Oh, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of Wade Barrett. Okay, I'm not a big fan of Wade Barrett anymore. Uh, we then get Caitlyn versus Beth Phoenix. Um, Caitlin gets the victory over Beth Phoenix. Um, I guess they're trying to make her look strong going into a match with Layla, which she's probably not going to win by giving her a win over probably the toughest diva in their roster. The commentators pointed out that Beth Phoenix was their top diva, their top champion, and then they get beaten by Caitlin. This was such a letdown. Thanks for WWE. I'm not even going to talk about this segment. Um, Raw recaps. Oh, they, they showed... There was about half an hour left in the show, and all of a sudden, they showed the whole Raw main event for 15 minutes. The whole thing. It's like, wow, it's like, really? You're going to show the whole Raw main event on SmackDown? God, how bad was that? I seriously did not want to see Cena after having to go through on Raw, but all I'll say is that they're really trying to hype up as the main event. Worthless. Yeah, and uh, they also had a nice little special message there for Jerry Lola. I expected a little bit more, but Jerry Lola, as long as you're getting well, that's all that matters really to me as a wrestling fan. I'll say that. Um, we then get on to the main event, Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan. Um, did you honestly care about Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan in a WrestleMania 28 rematch? A rematch, when it's months later, 
And the fact is, we all knew the same result was going to happen because Daniel Bryan's not going to go anywhere compared to Sheamus. I guess you could say that Sheamus is being touted as the next big baby face by WWE, whereas Daniel Bryan can't even shave. Um, the one thing, once again, Brad Maddox is getting really promoted as a referee lately. He was refereeing the main event on this week's SmackDown, and um, I must admit, I, I really didn't care about this match. I wasn't really paying much attention, um, and the, the, we kind of knew what was going to happen, really. Daniel Bryan taps out to the Cloverleaf. Um was surprised they didn't have anything anything really happen after the match, though, really. You thought that to hype the match at, at Night of Champions, they really need to do something in at the post-match to really make it stand out as, from, as a world championship match. Like I said in the opener, Del Rio lets me down. But that for the whole night, he absolutely did nothing. It made him stand out as an opponent or a worthy challenger for the World Eric Championship, no coming in the main event, so it made Del Rio look even worse. So you wouldn't have Del Rio as part of your race as an ace group, then? Not even close to this group. I, I guess that says a lot about how high the ace and eight standards are. Um, so yeah, so your overall, Terminator NJ, your opinions on this, do I do I dare even ask your opinions on this week's show? This show was awful, nothing really stood out, nothing was strong enough to be called a good part of SmackDown, apart from... What? Nine... 1612. <laughs> what? I, I, nothing I, else stood out apart from that. Everything else, nothing. Okay, uh, my, uh, as for my thoughts, if I can ever get my thoughts in, um, my thoughts on SmackDown is that it was not a very good show. I didn't really like it too much, and I just want to get out of this review now because he's, he's staring at me. Do, 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 do you want me to do the outro, or do you want to do it, or what? All I'm going to say, people, is the date is coming really close. Day by day, hour by hour, we're getting close to that. So be prepared. And some certain people should watch out. And from Mr. Parkinson sitting here, and me terminate to NJ leaving right here, goodbye. What a waste of bloody time. WWE, what the hell was that? The time is coming, mortals. Be prepared. Ha, 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 ha.